Okay, here we go. Thanks for tuning in. You're uh, tuned in here to the Music First Hand Live Streaming Showcase. I'm Chris Petrafka, CEO of Music First Hand. I'm excited um, today to have, uh, have our guest Carson McCone with me. And uh, about a month ago, we did a pilot run with uh, Ray Prim. Uh, if you haven't seen his stuff, please, ch please check out Ray. He's incredibly talented. And we have the comedian Natalie Holmes. And the plan is to have comedians interviewing musicians, but today you're stuck with me. I am neither funny nor am I musically um, coordinated whatsoever. So um, hopefully you'll let that slide and just enjoy our time here with Carson today. And about 18 months ago, uh, I invested and left uh, whatever I was doing, invested everything I've got into uh, trying to help musicians connect with businesses and individuals for live performances. And it's something I'm passionate about, it's something I believe in. And so this showcase is meant to be another way to bring you artists, uh, especially even if you're not here in Austin, another chance to connect in a lighthearted, fun uh, way. And so I hope that you'll engage with us online. We're on, we're on uh, Facebook Live. And so please comment, ask your questions. And uh, if you ask your questions, um, those questions will come to me and uh, maybe I'll get a chance to uh, give you a shout out here online. Um, and so let me introduce our uh, guest here today. It's Carson McCone. And uh, Ray Wiley Hubbard once said that Carson writes songs like her life depends on it. And she has shared the stage with Ryan Bingham, Lydia Loveless, Charlie Mars, David Ramirez, Jerry Jeff Walker, Shaky Grace, and you all know Gary Clark Jr. And um, she also will be um, performing at the 2017 Austin City Limits Music Festival. So if you don't have your tickets, please get your tickets and she's a definite must see. And she's working on a new album uh, in Nashville with producer Mike McCarthy, who's also been a producer for Spoon, Heartless Bastards, and Patty Griffin. Um, so that's a pretty nice resume. And um, with that, I want to really introduce you to um, someone that I've gotten connected to really just through her music uh, and listening to it nonstop the past week. It's pretty powerful. And so with that, let me introduce to you Carson McCone. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. This is a song called The Spider Song. <laughs> Yourself, the spider spins a 
couldn't make a place so lightly then the morning breeze fall doily across your face wake journal and ready for you'll never have to feel reach for me and you'll know Sometimes it all comes at once, and uh, mm. sometimes it the songs sort of start writing themselves, and you don't realize what they're about, yeah. and then then you do, and you're like, oh, now I can finish it. Oh. Now I know what I'm trying to say. Um, but yeah, that one's that one's been a couple of years in the making, and uh, I mean, I, I wrote pretty much the entire thing mm. probably the first night that mm. I wrote that song, but it wasn't quite done yeah. until. Now. Your songs are, um, to me, they're that type where you hear it once, you're like, oh yeah, that's, that's kind of nice. And then you like, hear it again, that's pretty good. And then you hear it a third, you're like, that is really awesome. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Yeah, it's a trick. I mean, sometimes you uh, disguise your tunes with a, like the melody's too pretty mm -hmm. and people don't even mm -hmm. really hear it, yes. you know what I mean? Um, but that, the, you know, catching somebody is the first trick, so, yeah. you know, yeah. or not trick, but um, that's the avenue, and so I'm glad that hopefully people stick with it long enough. Yeah, because that's what you really do, that staying power, you're going to hear it again, yeah. you know, and, yeah. uh, and we post a lot of, like, private concerts ourselves, mm -hmm. and it's like, man, I've heard, I mean, you hear, you hear some of something on the radio, and you hear it in, like, this moment where you're, like, in this bubble, and you're like, Oh my gosh, yeah. that just hit me, right? It, it happens to me too, yeah. <laughs> you know, even in the, in the writing process, mm. so, yeah. So you made it's a new song, you're working on a new album, mm. um, how is it, where is it at in the process, when might we expect to uh, see it? So the record is done being recorded, mm. um, we're in the process of mixing, and then it has to be mastered, mm -hmm. um, artwork has to be done, okay. um, but basically, once the musical part of it is done, I will have the product that I can begin to shop, mm -hmm. which um, is the goal for this record. I've released two CDs in the past okay. um, that I did sort of all on my own, mm -hmm. um, which is great. You have all the control you want, mm -hmm. um, but you don't necessarily have the means to get it heard. Mm -hmm. um, and so, a cool thing that happened with me was I got I was I got a, I received a grant last year yeah. um, from Black Fret and what that allowed me to do was make go ahead and make the record. Mm -hmm. So instead of shopping an idea of a record to a label, mm -hmm. I'm shopping the actual product. Mm -hmm. So I've already I've mm -hmm. had complete creative control. This is what I want um, to put out to the world. It's also like the work's already done. You mm -hmm. just have to help me put it out. And yeah. so. That's the goal, is to find um, the right people to work with, to yeah. make that happen, um, and have a platform to release it. Mm -hmm. So, I would love to say that it will be done and ready to go uh, by the end of the year, but it may be an early 2018 release. Yeah. Um, but I'm really, really eager for it to be heard, because I'm treating it really as my debut into yeah. the music world, and so uh, I can't wait. It yeah. just, it has to be done the right way yep. and so um, that's a process but it's looking like it's going to happen you know okay. within the next six months so, so the, the last two albums you've done on your own mm -hmm. um, and Austin's also obviously a kind of tough place to play because there's so much good talent here right it's really difficult yeah it's you know the live music capital of the world mm -hmm. which means that everybody and their uncle or cousin or whatever has a yeah. guitar and plays shows yeah. um 
every bar is now a venue, you know, and mm -hmm. so. It's great because, like, for me, growing up in a town like this, I was able to go see live music from a young age, and that's how I met all the people that I play with today, and that's how I learned how to play, mm -hmm. watching other people. It was wonderful. But then you become, like, you know, a part of this huge... I mean, there are how many, hundreds of shows you yeah. can go see tonight, you yes. know? Yeah. And so it's how do you then make your voice heard mm -hmm. um, in this sea of people doing... You know, they're doing the acoustic yes. guitar singing thing. <laughs> yeah, I think it's and so you know, it's like, how how do you make yourself heard? And um, and that is a real challenge. But I do. I mean, I I feel very lucky to have grown up here. But it mm -hmm. but it is a challenge. Um, being heard, having people pay attention, grabbing people's attention yes. in a sea of other people who are trying to do the same thing. That's right. And everybody's and they all got good intentions. Everybody's working hard every yeah. night. They're all trying to market. I think I counted. There was like a hundred and. On Wednesday night in Austin, there's like 118 different shows. Oh, I'm sure. That is, least, right? Yeah. That's insane, right? Yeah, so there's that many shows. So um, what's the typical day like for you? Because I think there's also misnomers. What's the artist really doing? Right? It's hard for us as fans sure. to know. What's, what's that day look like for you? You're... Not as romantic as I wish them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of my time is spent on the computer. Hmm. And I'm not very good at the computer. So... <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you know, I'm. I send out a ton of emails, okay. um, and I mean that's the thing when you book shows, because really, I mean you have to, you have to play shows to make money. Yeah. Um, and you really have to leave your town and go play shows elsewhere to mm -hmm. make money. Um, there's a fine line between playing too many shows in your hometown, mm -hmm. saturating the scene. Um, so you have to maybe play house shows, or you have to go on the road. Yeah. Um, and so, if you've never been on the road before, you don't know the promoters of the venues, mm -hmm. you don't know, you don't have a following there. Um, so, you know, it's a matter of like, you can hook up with some other bands, mm -hmm. uh, you find other locals, but a lot of that has, it's there's a lot of networking, there's a lot of being on the computer. There's a lot of sending out hundreds of emails every day and not hearing back from one person. Yeah. And you have to figure out when it's appropriate to send two more. <laughs> and yeah. you know, it's like, um, and then it's, it's a waiting startup. game. Yeah. But yeah, it's totally a startup and, and it's um it's time consuming and uh I also I work with um a booking agent now, which is really great yeah. because he's also my neighbor. So mm -hmm. <laughs> We can get together and work on the computer, yep. um, but it it is a challenge. And so a lot of what happens during a typical day, you know, if I'm if I'm lucky, I'll be playing a show, um, or writing. Uh, but that writing for me is is kind of like the time I find for it is is less and less these days, just because I'm on the road a lot, mm -hmm. um, and then finding the time and the space to do that when I am home. Yeah, like. You can't necessarily just push a button and be like, create now. <laughs> Doesn't just start you know? now. No so, but, it, but you have to exercise mm -hmm. your brain. And so the more you do it, the, the better you are at really harnessing that creativity when, when it is magical. Mm -hmm. So um, there are those magical days where I wake up in the morning and I start writing and, you know, there will be a song. Comes together. But, you know, uh -huh. there, there's a lot more of me yeah. sitting behind a computer screen, like, having my computer crash on me and not knowing what to do and, you know, needing to respond to emails. Yeah. Um, but yeah, booking shows and just trying to get out there. Connecting your fans, you're, yeah, you're trying to find new connections. Yeah, you're yeah. truly like on your own as a startup. And um, you know, one of the things I frequently get asked from fans is like, because I'll ask like, why are you not booking more of these artists for some of the shows? Whether it's a small cafe, a winery, or whether it's a private yeah. individual. And everyone's like, well, it's a little intimidating. I don't want to go up and, you know, talk to them. I don't know. Like, What's your advice when somebody is like, because you're a rock star, you're on the stage, you're like six feet above everybody, you know, what's your advice when somebody's like, ah, I can't, I don't know if I should go talk to Carson, I don't know how to book her, what do I pay, you know, what, what happens? Man, uh, please, please, <laughs> please, please, please come say hi to the people that you see perform because yeah. not only does it just really do something special for the artist, I mean, yeah. When somebody says that to me, it's like, you're thinking of a hundred other things sometimes, and when somebody comes up and says that, like, 
they liked your performance. It means, it really does mean the world. I mean, yeah. I can't tell you how much it means. And, um, and then also, as far as booking shows, um, most artists have uh, contact sheet like forms on, in their websites um, or through Facebook, mm -hmm. music Facebook pages. A lot of people have reached out to me through the messages. Um, and I, I get them, Tim, my manager gets mm -hmm. them, and um, we work together as a team to book these shows. And um, so if I'm on the road and you want to reach out, somebody's going to be able to get back to you, whether yeah. it's Tim or whether it's me, um, or I'm making somebody else man my phone while I'm driving uh -huh. nine hours. Um, and I mean, really, that's how I stay afloat. So don't be um, hesitant to come up because I would want to play for you. That's like, if it could make or break me, you know, like if people don't, continue to do that and, yeah. and bring these people into their homes and do house shows or um, get involved with a performance, um, yeah. I don't have a place to play, <laughs> you yeah. know? I mean, there's always, we want to play for you, so uh, don't hesitate, and it means a lot, and um, I'm also, I'm just really, I think it's so important when people mm -hmm. come up and talk to me, and I, I want to get back to people immediately, so when, when folks email me, I get it, Tim gets it, and yeah. we talk about it, and we can usually work out something really cool to where yeah. I get a show out of it, there's a performance of all for um, whoever's yeah. in the audience. And you guys are both super responsive, right? So, I mean, oh, yeah. I Tim mean, and nimelrecords.com, send a note, send a note, note to you, it it's, works out great. And yeah. Speaking of live performances, so then, I'm curious, what's the strangest thing that's ever happened to you at a live performance? I'm, just, I'm sure you've, you've, you've toured all over the there, world. Yeah, there are many, many strange things that <laughs> happen to you on the road, in the van, at the gas station, <laughs> uh, on stage. Uh, I, want, I once had somebody propose to my violin player while I was on stage. That was crazy. Was some drunk Irishman <laughs> uh, during South By. Uh, but I, I actually, on my last run, I was in Memphis, and... I woke up in Fort Worth at 5.30 a.m., which is something that I never do. Uh, and then I drove nine hours. And then cool. we did like two intense hours of like filming with segment. And then we went straight to our gig, which was a two hour hmm. show outside um, in like this gravel yard, sort of outdoor bar. Mm -hmm. So I was like mentally and physically kind of exhausted and I was, the bar fed us, and so I was waiting till afterwards to eat, and um, I'd have a, like a couple drinks, and I was putting my guitar away. We had just finished playing. I was on stage. I was putting my guitar away, and I had I was feeding the uh, lip of the snap on my guitar case okay. into itself, and it snapped uh -huh. very in the like the meaty part of my thumb. And I mean, it not <laughs> not badly. I mean, I was bleeding and it was yeah. painful, but it wasn't like I need to go. Here. It wasn't like I need to go to the hospital or anything. The fan picked it up. It was a souvenir. <laughs> They're like, hey, gotta, gotta that, would be, that would be even uh -huh. weirder. But uh, on eBay, I think you can get it on sale right now. Cars and stuff for twenty nine ninety nine. I wish it was worth that much. But <laughs> I don't think so. But I passed out, and I've never passed out before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, I've broken almost every bone in my body. Like three times, uh -huh. and I was walking off the stage, and I just, I was like, in pain, but I mean, I broke my leg in what, three Was it like so a cartoon, like, like you just kind of like, like, oh, was that? Well, I, I was walking off the stage, and Sam, who was my hit steel player, yeah. I was like, I think I need to go to the car, Yeah. and he was like, what, you know, okay, <laughs> and so we're walking off the stage, off the steps, and he like I had his arm and all of a sudden I just you know dead wow. weight. and I mean I don't know I wasn't there so yeah, I can't you're, tell you because I was out and apparently he like I mean all these people were like oh my god you know, gathering yeah, around because right? I'm mean? I'm like outside at this bar in front of this whole crowd I just played to yeah and then like apparently he stood up again and walked two more steps and did it again and you don't and remember I, that, like, I don't remember out. that uh, <laughs> it was so weird. And I can't believe it's because I cut my finger. Like yeah. you think, like you're so resilient, like that a little bit of that blood, you know. And then it's like, what? You know, <laughs> I've seen some grisly stuff too, and like, my body was just like, no, yeah, you didn't done. feed me all day. That's it. 
you work me too hard. Yeah, yeah. I'm checking out. All right. And uh, <laughs> so who knows? Probably all the people at Rail Garden in Memphis, Tennessee, yeah. think that I'm like a complete lush, well, and I just passed out. That's true. Message. And I actually told that story to another musician friend, and they were just like, just don't clarify. It's cool. There's a story there. It, it fits the whole like persona of like you're so outlaw country. And they're so, like, we're not uh, She was like, yeah, yeah. totally loaded and fell off stage. <laughs> yeah, that's what happened. Oh man. Yeah, yeah it was weird. It was weird. Well, which makes me uh, think of another question. There's been a few, I've read stories, I don't know if tradition blogs and podcasts out there. You, you all can check this stuff out. But I guess there was like this dark, really stormy, rainy night. It was really nasty out. This is what I've heard. Uh huh. And I guess um, you show up uh, at a hole in the wall, a friend of yours murders somebody, you take the place hostage. This is like your first performance. No one could leave. The doors are locked, and that's kind of how you really got on stage because it was like super badass move. Is that true? Because that's what yeah. I read. No, yeah, that's that's well, exactly man. how it happened. So um, you are number eleven on uh, country music's most dangerous outlaws. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was sixteen years old, and okay. uh, we didn't kill them. Actually, we just broke their collarbone. Oh, but well, they that's were unable so to bad. Play. <laughs> and so you know they needed nice. somebody to fill the stage, and I happened to show up at the right time. And what a coincidence! Yeah, man, that story keeps getting crazier and crazier. Yeah, I think I've read every blog and podcast for the several years, and I was like, wait, now it's suddenly some people are dying, it was, it was pretty good, so. Um, but, I've never killed anybody that I know of. All right, we're gonna edit that part out, but. All right, Carson, can we hear another, another tune? Maybe? Yeah, all right, yeah, let's sure. do it. Um, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do kind of a, an, kind of an upbeat sort of country tune. Um, this is one, I was actually, talking about where songs come from. I was having a conversation with somebody uh, and this slipped out and I was like, how is that not a country song? Um, anyways, it's called Maybe They're Just Really Good Friends. Hmm. All right. Well, maybe they're just really good friends. But if not, I Oh, that she means no more than me. After all, they're only friends. And maybe when your life is just because, oh, he don't want to spoil me. That's mine. Huh, really? I need to use that. <laughs> or, you know, like whoever writes it down that's first. Funny, yeah. You know, because stuff starts coming out, and you're like, man, that 
So then everybody stops saying you're like, oh, I didn't mean to say that. You're gonna write yeah. it yourself. I'm not <laughs> yeah, smart. Totally. I, I, totally. I, I did have a follow-up question as I was thinking as you were playing that one. Is that mm -hmm. if if you were to kill somebody, <laughs> I really want to know this. Yes. Like, in the most hilarious way, how would you do it? Well, okay, I was a really morbid kid. <laughs> Maybe a lot of people were. But I used to um, say that I was going to shoot him in the gut with a crossbow. <laughs> and that was like a thing that I said. So uh, maybe I would okay. do that. That sounds... <laughs> uh, I don't know. That sounds... That's pretty, hilarious. That's pretty painful. Yeah. In like seventh grade, that was like a thing that I said. I don't know what's worse, lot. that you would shoot him in a crossbow that you find it hilarious that there's, you just shot the movie. Well, in the gut cross. is important too. Because yeah. if your gut shot, it means you like... I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> So, Explain I don't even like I don't even kill spiders. Okay, I'm so peaceful. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I can tell. So, yeah. So, have you had the, by the way, have you had the Kool Aid black and blue? Yeah, one? I actually um, had some at a recent performance, and oh. that's why I'm waiting till after the show to drink it because it works. Pretty intense. I that's had one really second good. I'm still like yeah, going. From but this. it's like yeah. So, and Kuve is our sponsor for the show. Oh, it's so If you so want to good. sponsor, please reach out. Because, yes, Kuve. Can we just sponsor us on the road? Oh, that's not a bad we idea. We do, like, shots from the van. Ooh, we could do that. I think you need a big crowler like this. You need yes, that size. Yes, that's what I need. Mean. Uh-huh. That would work That's really perfect. Well. Then I wouldn't have packed a lot. Yes, we're getting some <laughs> questions online, though. So, okay. one of them is... Uh, when are you getting married, and when can we expect to see children? Okay. Oh, sorry, wait, that's a, that's a question your mom sent in, so ignore that Very one. Funny. No, we'll pass on that one. Nice, thanks, Mom. Um, do you have a Spotify playlist? And if you do, are you yeah. sure? Yeah. All right. Um, I have the, the two past recordings uh, oh. that I've released are on there, so there are 16 songs in total of my music on Spotify. Okay. So if you follow me, you can listen to my music that way. Um, I also, actually just today, curated my own Spotify playlist of, I called it Lately Songs, because it's just tunes that I've been listening to oh, okay. lately. Nice, yeah. Um, and so some of those people might be, like, go-tos for a lot of people that follow my kind of music. You know, there's Lucinda Williams and uh, a handful of other artists on there that are sort of in the old country Americana vein. Um, okay. But there's also some other... Um, contemporary young musicians, uh, Margaret mm. Glassby and Marika Hackman are two women mm. that whose music I really like. Yeah. Um, Not there, familiar with you. Though. There are yeah. two songs. Anyway, so there's this Spotify playlist. Mm. If you go and you find mine, um, I've curated my own like sort of listening one that oh, yeah. I've shared. Um, so you can actually follow that and listen to what I've been doing, uh, or listen to what I've been listening to, okay. um, whether it be on the road or just while I'm working on the computer. Um, and I want to actually try to keep that up. Okay. Um, this today actually is the first one. Hmm. Uh, my manager and I sat down and because I don't know how to use the computer very well, uh, <laughs> we figured out how to do it on the internet. But uh, <laughs> the internet. Yeah, the the internet. Or like yeah, it's crazy. Uh, it right. is. It's crazy. Uh, how yeah. you guys are doing this it blows my mind. Uh, I don't know. Uh, we don't know either, to be honest. I uh, I once did a concert window oh, where okay, I yeah. like got the time wrong because there's you know <laughs> and yeah, I yeah. was like so I was like walking around in my house like without any pants on or something. <laughs> I was like oh gosh I go on in two minutes like you know because yeah. it's like you have it up and ready to go anyways so this is blowing my mind that we're on the internet but so wait did you walk in the concert window with no pants on is that where I, you're going with that I didn't okay I almost all right that would be a lot of followers I, yeah but that's what I, maybe I should do that next time you want to yeah, um, viral we don't want to have to sell our bodies to survive. We want to be able to play music and yeah. share our art with people. So, yeah. yes, come talk to us. But, uh, but no. I will. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Uh -huh. Just stay tuned. It's uh, great. i got a great like, dad bod working. I'll walk around and just, you know, we'll see if that works. There you go. Cool. <laughs> I mean, but that's yes, what I need to do to sell the show. I do have a Spotify. And if you follow me, I'm going to be posting, obviously, more of my music, but also stuff that I've been listening to okay. that might be... Um, of surprise to some people, um, you might get turned on to stuff you don't know. 
Okay. All right. Or deep cuts of artists that you already know. I need to follow that. And, yeah. And you've got some upcoming shows, right? Yes. You got Mueller coming up. Yeah, Wednesday. Wednesday. Yeah. Right. I've not been there yet. What's the idea? Neither have you. Okay. Cool. Uh, so that's exciting. Yeah. Um, what time? We play at seven. Okay. Seven to eight thirty. All right. Um, and we're gonna have a. We're gonna have the full band there. Okay. Uh, it's a five piece. It should be really fun. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Well. I we're gonna try to get up there. And the White Horse was literally it was packed. It was, it was that was a fun show. Even get up there. Yeah. And, yeah. Like people were, some people were dancing, and I stood in the back and they're going, doing this kind of thing, and it was, nothing was happening. It's the same thing as yeah. talking talking to the artists. It man, dancing yes. is so much fun. And yes. you, if you can get the courage up, you get up and get whether it be liquid or not, yeah. You know, it is once you get the hang of it, it is so much fun. Okay. And it also, when you're up on stage and you see people moving around to your music. It's pretty cool. Yeah, right? Isn't yeah. it? It's got to feel good. It um, it's like when you've done shows and you're, you really connect and you can see people connecting with your music. Yeah. In the moment. I mean, I've been, that's just the thing I really love about some of the more private shows. Uh, totally. Because you really connect. That's the thing is you have, like, being an artist that, like, shares everything, basically, yeah. like, yes. deepest, darkest stuff. Uh, yeah. We may have to stop. We we'll take a quick pause. Okay. Oh, okay. We... All right, hey, sorry, we had, we had a glitch. This is technology, it's do it yourself. You can tell, I mean, like, this is it. It's, it's raw and, and unperformed, so, and, and unrehearsed. So I hope that, uh, hope you guys are cool with that. That's what happens when you're messing with the World Wide Web. And you can tell, Carson and I's together it's skills. because I'm here, that's why we're having yeah. So thanks for hanging in there. So, you know, if you're still watching and they're tuned back in, we hope, we hope you enjoy it. Carson and I were just talking about that live performance and that moment of like being in that bubble. Because um, that's something that, man, I just love, you get goosebumps. But too, I mean, like what you were saying about being in a packed white horse and like, yeah. And the crowd is just like moving and pulsing and there's like yeah. everybody's dancing and there's this wild energy but like and that's really powerful but at the same time like I've played shows to like tiny tiny little crowds at the hole in the wall or at the cactus cafe or yeah. at a house show where it's like it's that intense but in a different yes. way yeah. and so yeah I mean it's and I love doing all of those things you know, it can be just as intimidating or powerful yeah. to like get up and play in front of four people as it is to be playing for thousands of people. Yeah. Um, and there's an energy from both that is like the level is the same, but it's a different kind of energy. Yeah. And it's like I wouldn't I wouldn't want to have to choose which one of those I was going to do for the rest of my life because they're both yeah. so beautiful. But it's a great point. One thing I find too is that in the in the bigger public shows, there's a, people are anonymous. It can feel like right. Mm -hmm. They're dancing. They're kind of enjoying. They're in their vibe. And there's tons of energy. But as soon as those private shows where they're sitting down and watching, they're not anonymous anymore, right? Then they're like really yeah. watching. They're listening. They're seeing everything you're doing, right? They're watching how you're handling the whole thing. And there's no backstage. It's like you're really connected. Oh yeah. I mean, and you can you can get that in intimate venues. But man, some of the like. When I book a tour and we have empty dates, it's like, it's important to play those live shows and yeah. get on like in the pub publications and be playing with other local bands. But sometimes that's not an option. And so we've had people offer their homes up mm -hmm. as a venue to yeah. do a house show. And it's really, really intimate. And it's it means so much to me. Yeah. And then I think I'm able to give that back yeah. And a certain amount of energy that's like really special. Uh, if you're into that kind of thing. Oh, I think, uh, yeah, I think people really <laughs> you know, connect. We, yeah. done, we started doing a much more of uh, connecting a lot of musicians and artists playing out at Compass Road Cellars in the winery. Yeah. And it's a similar type of feeling where it's like that nice, quiet, intimate, incredible, or, I guess I want to say like relaxing, like you can really oh, yeah. sit and listen. Man, those are moments. And, and, I, and also, I'm more likely to buy merch from the artists because now I've connected with them. And yeah. the merch sales, the live performances, the ticket sales, that's, really, that's what keeps you guys going, right? Yeah. If, so if we don't continue to do that, that's, like you said, that, that's just, you can't keep going at that rate. So right. you know, the more people can reach out to you, because um, you're not going to get rich with streaming, right? Right, <laughs> right. Yeah. But hopefully, you know, those, I mean, that's the way that the music world works now. Yeah, and right. so if you can share that, if you can, if you can harness it, 
and use it to your advantage, yeah. you can share it and then somebody that, you know, whether or not you're setting up shows here in this town, a person can do a live show here and open their home up to do a concert, yeah. house concert, but then also like their friend in, you know, Roanoke can do the same thing yes. and on an off night that like on a Monday night where you aren't going to get a gig in a yeah. club do the same thing and it's because you shared this yes. on our list or what, you know, like that's, it's hard for me to keep up with the technology, mm -hmm. but it's so important for me to, um, because that's the way things have yeah. to work now. That's and, right. and we still, but, and as disconnected as that all kind of feels, mm -hmm. it's our job then to like come back together as the community and like, how can we use it to benefit our community? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's so, a whole ecosystem. They yeah. all got to support it's, it's the thing. Um, Speaking of connecting and, and the magic bubble, we we do another song. Yeah, I'd love to. Great, cool. Maybe Thank one you. more and then we'll we'll finish up. So hang with us. Carson McCone, everybody, incredible. Thank you. I'm gonna do a song called How About It. You got the bones 
And I've got this feeling in my bones I can't feel. There's lots of room in this world, but someone's gotta do. Tonight I guess I like the looks of you. So have I been young? Or have I been old? Chris's house and um, he just sat at the piano and, and played and um, and I just got to sing which mm -hmm. was really fun and yeah. it's, it's, it, it has a completely different feel to it when you mm -hmm. do it that way and it's a fun thing to do with songs is to sort of reimagine them like that yeah so yeah there, there is a new video of that one and I had a lot of fun with it it's cool it's nice it's a, it's a really simple video it's yeah. just nice and pure and clean and it's like your voice comes through it's really well done and thanks yeah, yeah. it's really good this, I think we did it like twice. Yeah. It's just kind of one shot deal. That's great. It was fun. Um, let me ask you uh, one last question yeah. before we start to wrap up. Um, so there's a lot of music venues, and you said there's even more and more places to, to play in Austin, right? And there's a lot of choices for us as fans. Um, but what places do you recommend that we really support that treat musicians really well? And I hope you'll be honest with us and let us know, like, where should we really go and visit? Because those are the places I want to give my money to, and the places that they support musicians, I want to support them. What sure. are the places you'd recommend, and why would you recommend? Um, well, <clears throat> the ABGB, which is the Austin Beer Garden mm -hmm. um, and Brewing Company, they uh, they make really great beer, and they mm -hmm. have. Uh, they have a great menu. Um, they, they're known for their pizza, but their yes. sandwiches are amazing. They have amazing salads, like vegetarian friendly. Their food is amazing. Yeah. Um, and they are just some of the sweetest people mm -hmm. you will ever meet. And they take amazing care of their musicians. Okay. Um, every time I leave there, I am so full of pizza. <laughs> right. I've never eaten yes. pizza again, and I love pizza. We are and too, then yes. I go back the next day. Uh -huh. um, <laughs> So it's just, it's a really, really, and it's totally family friendly. They have a big outdoor area where you can bring pets. Um, and they work hand in hand with other, um, well, like, they work with nonprofits around town a lot. Yeah. Austin Pets Alive, they That's do right. a lot of work with. Um, they're just a really great, they're great folks to support because they support the community. Yeah. And um, they always have great music. Uh, I always have a great time when I play there. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just a, overall enjoyable experience. Okay. Um, so definitely the ABGB, great folks there. Mm -hmm. um, the White Horse is another place that I play a lot um, and it's really fun. It's mm -hmm. really rowdy and yeah. it tends to be uh, more on the countryside yeah. as far as the performance goes. I mean, that being said, like I played there on Saturday and I think like like half of my music would be wouldn't necessarily call it country music. Mm -hmm. So it just is a, there's a fun energy there and it gets rowdy. Yeah. And, um, Even Sunday nights, like late. Yeah, totally. Yeah, totally. Totally. Yeah. Um, we're going to be doing a residency there in November oh, on Thursday right. nights at Great. midnight. So come out and party. Um, but yeah, so I mean, and I kind of cut my teeth going there, yeah. um, playing there, played there like with my band. That's why I built a band, was to be able to play at the White Horse. Yeah. Um, and so some of my first shows were there. And it's an institution now. It is. It really is. Yeah. It's like, yeah, totally side. It's, it's great. So but also... UGB White Horse. Yeah. Um, yeah. I would say, I mean, mm -hmm. the Saxon Pub is a integral part of South Austin that, like, everything mm -hmm. around it is starting to look different. Yeah. I like almost miss turning in there every time yeah. now because everything around is changing. But that place is really, really special and it has a ton of history. 
And it's also a really beautiful place to sit down and listen yeah. to live music. Yeah. Um, I've had some really, really special shows there that, um, like we were talking about the energy earlier, where mm -hmm. the energy of the White Horse can be this like really electric thing. Yeah. Um, because of the rowdy crowd. Yeah. Um, you get like a similar energy, but like in a different way from being in this like seated, dark, quiet yeah, yeah. space. It's almost like a, almost like a listening room. Really? I mean, yeah. it can get rowdy in there yeah, too. Yeah. I mean, you know, you get a 10 piece band in there, yeah, like it's, it's crazy. crazy. It's but, crazy yeah. um, but that place, man, too, they've supported me a lot mm. and I, and I want to do the same for them. And I love playing shows at the Saxon Pub. Yeah. Um, the Cactus Cafe is another great, yeah, that's great, great awesome spot, stable. Yeah. Um, I grew up going to shows there. So. And their connection with KUTX. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of, yeah. Yeah. So I would say if you want to go out uh, with your friends and go like get rowdy and, and drink, I'd yeah. go to the ABGV or the White Horse and then like the Saxon is always, always go support the Saxon. Um, yeah. It's a great place to see really either kind of show. But yeah. um, you never know. You'll walk in on a Sunday and it's going to be like, this yes. jam-packed show and everybody's dead silent. Yes, that's right. Um, same with the cactus. So. Yeah, a Monday night at Saxon Pub, you'd be completely packed. Yeah. You know, with with um, an incredibly talented, incredibly popular, gifted musician that's playing the Saxon Pub. Yeah. And here you are, you're connecting totally. with them. You mentioned, too, the nonprofit part, and I'm, um, I think it's good to give a shout-out to at least a couple of nonprofits we've been close to, and I yeah. think you have as well. Kids in a New Groove. Oh my gosh, yeah. Great one, right? Especially if you're a musician, paying attention, you're watching now. Um, they are, I know they're looking for more mentors. Uh, they mentor uh, children in foster care. So I would really agree Man, I didn't that. know that they were looking for mentors. So they that's are. good. I want to know that. That's yes. such an amazing group of people, and what they do is so powerful. It's really good. And they, yeah, they have such a demand. So if you could do it, um, that'd be great. And then uh, the Sims Foundation is what oh, yeah. close to. Definitely. I have the sticker on my guitar case. Yeah, yeah. So support the Sims Foundation as well. Two great nonprofits. It really is a, there's a music ecosystem that we have to we have to support. So I hope that you'll uh Well in turn me. I think it just supports the entire community. Yeah. I mean, you know, that's we're right. all just taking care of each other. Yeah, so. that's how we have to do it. Yeah. So we're gonna wrap up, but uh, let me just uh, give a couple shout outs. Let me thank uh, Ben Lee who's been uh, helping us with the production uh, for the show, which has been fantastic. So thank you, Ben. Claudia Kulag has been running our social, uh, which is fantastic. Uh, you know, we're just bootstrapped, trying to do this to help artists, because um, we just think their music is beautiful and more people need to know and hear about it. Uh, let me think our sponsor, uh, Cuve uh, Coffee and Bar on East 6. These, these guys are fantastic. Um, and if you ever want to uh, find me, I'm usually there. Um, and that's so they've supported us. We've been uh, chugging black and blue. Well, I was in the afternoon. and. Uh, might maybe later, so we can catch another show. Um, and then, uh, especially, let me thank Carson for coming on tonight. Of course. Incredible. Thanks for the work that you did. Yeah, I wish you the best. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. Next week, we have uh, the Ghost Wolves on Thursday night. Talk about shit getting crazy. Thursday night, tune in, 7 p.m. next week. The Ghost Wolves. Thanks, everybody.